So we started this discussion, the supernatural life, last week, um, two weeks ago. And I shared some personal stories and personal experiences. So this morning we'll continue that discussion. And we'll spend some time in the supernatural. Yeah, because I strongly believe that supernatural is the, the new normal for every child of God. A child of God is not a victim in this world. And we are not spectators. Bible says we are partakers of the divine nature. We are supposed to be partakers of the divine nature. It's just like they say you are a prince. Even if you run to anywhere in the world, uh, the royal gene is inside of you. You and I know that it's not really about the outward. It's about the blood that you came from. So it's the same thing with the children of God. We are not supposed to be spectators in this world. The things shouldn't just happen to us and then we, we, we don't know what's going on. No, that's not our destiny. The Bible says we are partakers of the divine nature. Please open your Bibles with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary. But the things which are not seen are eternal. As Christians and as children of God, you are not supposed to be moved by the things you see alone. There is a dimension that is not seen. Why we look not, why we focus not at the things that our body can interpret? What the five senses can control? What the five senses can sense? What the five senses can interpret and give to you? He said, why we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen? So that's where the focus is. Because that's the way, the place that shapes the one that can be seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 to 5 that we read last two weeks, the anchor scripture for two weeks ago, the Bible says, though we work in the flesh, when the Bible makes reference to flesh, it talks about the five senses. Though we work in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh, for the weapon or weapons of our warfare are not canal, but mighty in God, for pulling down strong oaths, casting down arguments and everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So last week we laid the foundation for the supernatural, or what I call the spirit world, the unseen world. And I want you to understand that it is a real world. It's a legal world. The supernatural is more real than the one that we can see. And because this one is temporary. That realm is more permanent. That realm has hierarchy. That realm has authority. It rules and controls what we see here on the physical. It's the reason why people want to connect with it and use it. And because it, it, it regulates everything that we see here. So that, that realm has hierarchy. And you don't go beyond your hierarchy. They, they, they know where they stand. Last week I mentioned that Daniel prayed and then God dispatched an angel. And an angel, in your own estimation, should be someone who is unusually powerful. Guess what? <laughs> the angel was kidnapped by a force or a being they called who? the prince of Persia. And it was not, stop, you are not going. It is locked down for 21 days. The Bible said, Daniel prayed to God. And then God said, it's done. Angel, go and answer him. Only for the angel to be kidnapped. 
and locked down for 21 days. He had to make representation to a higher authority, a higher angel to come and fight for him. And then <laughs> when no one helped him, he delivered his message to Daniel. And he said, as I'm going, uh, I, I, I have another, another, for, another power to deal with. In fact, he talked about another prince of Gushia. In the Old Testament, it looks like they, they see angels. Angels come to deliver messages. God opens their eyes to see angels. And what is the angels coming to do? To deliver messages. We don't see angels like that now. Why? Because the one who is sending the message lives here. Are you listening to me? The one who sent angel is now where? Is now here. So what's the job of angels? In those days, they bring messages. But what is the job of angels now? You send them messages. Now, you carry God on the inside of you because you are a God. You now give angels. The Bible says they are ministering spirits sent to us the air of salvation. In fact, Apostle Paul wrote a letter to the church. And said, you guys, you go to court and preach your case before unrighteous people. He said, won't you allow yourself to be defrauded by another brother? After all, you said you're of the same faith. Then he said, don't you know that you, can, you are going to judge angels? Oh my God, me, I'm going to judge angels. Angel, why, why did you do that? Stop that. I said, don't you know that you're going to go judge angels? Is it not better that you start practicing it from here? That was what he said. We can come to church. But the truth is the real transformation happens in the place where we pay attention to the word. See, this Bible is a text. He was inspired when it was written. You put it under your pillow, it is useless. It's like any textbook. People put it under a pillow. It's, it's, gonna, it's not going to do anything. It's useless. It's a text. In fact, the Bible says that the letter kills. If it's written, written, you can... Because it is inspired, you need the Spirit of God to interpret it for you. So when the Bible says that the word of God is sharper than any two, as I said, it's quick and powerful. It is not the text. Are you listening to me? It is not the cramming. It's not the right thing. It is when the spirit, the word enters into your spirit and comes out from your mouth. That's when it is quick and powerful. And that's the supernatural dimension. When I was younger, when we were asking, asking us to cast out demons, they would say, hold the sword of the Bible, sword of the Spirit. So we hold it like this, I'm doing, can, can, can. That's, that's, I will never forget it. My sister is here now. My mom would say, do it like this. And then we say, <laughs> you know why we're doing that? We're not even quoting scriptures. <laughs> there's a higher realm you know what that is your place you know why it's your place this man that you see this, spirit, this man that you see is a spirit being I've told you before spirits don't die why because the spirit being comes from the breath of God and the breath of God cannot die. Are you listening to me? He, he doesn't know. That's why Satan has not been killed. That's why demons cannot die. The supernatural realm is more real. And many Christians are not aware. It's the reason why people go for deliverance. Why? Because it looks like a force that is controlling their life, regulating their life, and suppressing them. And it's true. Because that's where everything flows from. 
We are not victims. Say to yourself, I'm not a victim. I'm a partaker. I'm a participator. So that realm controls this realm and it's more powerful than this one that we see. There is what they call spiritual warfare. It is real. I have done deliverance for people before. I have cast out devils before. I have done deliverance consistently before. If there are no demons, when there are no possessions, why should I be deliverances? It's in the Bible. Jesus cast out devils. In fact, I say Mary, that he cast out what? Seven wicked spirits from her. And there was a man he met in a cemetery who had what? A legion living within him. The Bible said that he could not be contained. He could not be chained. <laughs> no one could handle him. Have you seen human brain who break mm, mm, chains? It's not their body. It's not body. It's not energy. It's another power that controls it. And nothing is small at that dimension. He receives an unusual power. Have you, do you remember the story of something? Who will uproot gates by the power of the Spirit? And the Bible said that there was, when, at his death, he pulled apart two pillars and then killed more Philistines than his lifetime. He wasn't ordinary power. I'm not sure I can carry more than one and a half bag of cement, which is 75 kg. So that's why the Bible says that the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. The Holy Spirit dwells in your spirit. And then it's actually under your control. This one that is not under people's control is not the Holy Spirit. When people start throwing chairs and some assaulting and saying, that's not the Holy Spirit. When it's demon, you don't have control. When it's the Holy Spirit, you have control because the Spirit of God is subject to you. Are you listening to me? So there are spiritual warfare. There are angels, there are demons. You may not have seen them, but there are angels, they are demons. They exist. They are real. There is blessings, there is curses. You cannot see them, but they are real. Blessing is an empowerment that makes you attract good things. A curse is also a negative empowerment that makes things just go wrong around the person. There are forces that shape and seek to control the destinies of human beings. And it's real. That's why I came to a conclusion that it's easier for me as a demon to sit over someone who controls thousands of people than just dealing with one person. Am I correct? It's the economy of scale. So I, I concluded that powerful devils sit in the places of authorities where they control the destiny and fears of nations than you can imagine because that's where they can shape the destinies of those people so if the church keep telling us that don't do politics i'm sorry we're allowing the space for demons and wicked spirit to control and when they decide i read something yesterday in my research they said during the second world war the nazi hammies of germany they attacked, they focused on about three, four nations. And because they said they want to perpetuate a particular gene among some human beings. So they look for certain nations. And what they do is that the soldiers invade the place and capture women and rape women and impregnate them. Then they harvest those children. See, wicked thing has happened in this world. Though. When there is war, why do soldiers rape? They don't, they, they don't care for human life. You see babies, they smash children, they kill children. I mentioned something like this before, not in Liberia's war. When the righteous rules, there is peace. When the wicked rules, everything is chaotic. And you are saying there is no supernatural. 
very supernatural. So, so the theology we've been listening looks like, like we are we're supposed to be pious and wait for the return of Jesus. We're not supposed to do anything. They can rule our world and shape our world and kill us and do whatever. Jesus is going to come and he has not come. Meanwhile, scripture says that we should occupy till he comes. In Deuteronomy 8.18, the Bible says that remember the Lord your God for it is he who gives you what? Power to do what? To get well. So what it means is that God does not give people cash. He gives them capacity, power. So even wealth is spiritual. And remember Satan too gives wealth. I shared with you last two Sundays ago, a young man that went to do juju money, ritual, money ritual. You have seen it in Hollywood. I am telling you the person I minister to. Are people still doing it? If people are not doing it, so what does that mean? It, it means that they want to manipulate this higher system that will give them unnecessary advantage. Am I correct? That's the supernatural. Even wealth is spiritual. And see, everything is not black and white like you think. There are a lot of grace. And a child of God, a spiritual person, understands these things. Very, very important. So life is spiritual. And the supernatural is real. So man is a spirit being. It came from the breath of God. I mentioned it before. It was created twice. First of all, it was created from nothing, from God. Okay? From nothing. From the breath of God. It was formed. It was created. Then later, it was formed. So when... God breathed into him that which God had created. He now put into a clay. And that clay came alive. I mentioned it before. It's that breath that turned sand into blood. And turned sand into cells. Into organs. Into all this human being that you see today. So it was made in the image of God. In other words, the form of God. And his likeness. The likeness talks about his ability and capacity. So we have the abilities. No one in the Bible says at the Torah of Babel, there's nothing that a man conceive, whatever they conceive, they can do what? They, they can achieve. Why? They have the abilities of God. And look at what man has done today. From the Stone Age man, see how sophisticated we have become. Not only that, we're not even trying to create human beings like ourselves now. We're talking of cloning. High, heavy duty sophisticated science. So, man has a soul. That soul is the one that gives us personality. I was telling my wife this morning, we were having a discussion, and I remember mentioning to her, I said, people react to the same experience differently. Am I correct? I said, why? Why do people react differently? To the same issue. The same issue. We give it different interpretation. Why? It's because of our makeup. The programming that we've been through. And guess what? It's so difficult to control a man if you don't go to his source. That's where, his, that's where the power is. So whatever you internalize consistently over time shapes you. It forms you. You may not admit it, but over time, it, it forms you. It shapes you. Let me give you an example. If if a lady over time has experienced um, she's been cheated over time. She has been cheated over time. After a while, she becomes insecure. Am I correct? It's because of that experience. It programs the person to be insecure. And because of that insecurity, she responds to, 
every situation that comes to her based on those experiences. Jesus said, make a tree good. He said, the fruit thereof will be good. In other words, if we don't correct that internal composition, we cannot correct the outcomes. That's why the Bible says, as a man thinks, so he is. So your soul gives you personality. But your soul is different from your spirit. So it is with the spirit. Okay, so with the soul, okay, we touch the realm of the supernatural once in a while. Because it's in the soul that your mind is. And have you, th- have you heard of mind travels? Okay, people travel. Have you heard of imagination? There is nothing you cannot imagine. You can sit here and travel to the United States and Germany and greet the president, I mean the chancellor, and come to Canada and shake the prime minister and, and then come back to your seat. Everything within your imagination. In fact, you can have an, a physical experience from your imagination such that it can happen there in your imagination and then we can see the manifestation of that impact right here where you're sitting. Are you with me? That's why Jesus said that when a man looks lustfully at a woman, he has done what? He has done it. He knows what he was saying. And because the truth is here, yeah, we can imagine. And then somebody stand up. Yeah, that's what, that's what, that's. Your body, you are already. <laughs> that's what he's saying. So it is with our spirit that we connect with God. That's why the Bible calls him the father of our spirit. The father of spirit. Um, I'm, I'm trying to recall that scripture. He said, if you, he said, if you have been corrected by your heavenly fathers, okay, and you respect them, he said, are you not supposed to be subject to the father of our spirit, knowing fully well that you guys are spirits? So it's with our spirit that we connect with that realm, that God. So when you became born again, it was your spirit that became born again. And when your spirit became born again, you develop capacity, you are translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. That was what happened. You may not have experienced it physically. You may not have seen anything change about you. Don't forget, it is not this realm. It happened at that realm. In fact, there was a party that was thrown when that thing happened in the heavenlies. They celebrated you. There was a party because you were instantly translated from the kingdom of darkness. Satan lost something. You may not be physically aware. Are you listening to me? I do christening online uh, for people outside the country. <laughs> wherever they are, wherever I am, when we connect and I do christening, has christening not been done? You said the pastor is not there. But the pastor was there. That's why technology is leveraging that dimension. It's so real. Now they are beginning to interpret it. We are now beginning to see it. Because now meetings can happen. You can call someone that is not supposed, that someone that is so far away. You can see the person now. How? They say you go to a winch. But that is it. That's technology. It's part of that small fraction of the supernatural. So there is a world beyond our comprehension, beyond the five senses powerful world. Guess what? Man is the only being who have the ability to operate at that realm and operate in this realm. You can operate in that supernatural realm, but you can also operate here in this realm. Demons need bodies to operate here. They don't have legal right here. That's why when a man dies, his spirit lives here. The body decays. Why are demons possessing people? Because they need a body, a medium here to operate here. But man is the only capacity, human capacity. I mean, 
the only being who have the capacity to operate both in this realm and that dimension. That's how God created us. If I know that I have that capacity, why am I not maximizing it? It's the same thing we talked about knowledge. We don't know. Neither do we understand. So the people who understand, they are controlling us. That man in the village that everybody's afraid of, he only knows how to manipulate the supernatural. And as long as he does, he controls every other person. Why do people run to pastors and prophets? Because they know they have the capacity to operate that dimension. Are you listening to me? So, there are three categories of men. I want you to understand. Let me show you that in the scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. I am taking time to break this thing down so that we understand. If you don't understand it, I'm sorry, you cannot operate it. And people forever remain victims in this world. The Christians who are afraid. The Christians who are never able to do anything with their lives. Meanwhile, they show up in church every Sunday. They give. They do everything. But their paperweights, they are slapped like this, tossed to and fro. And people use them. And some of them become so bad a victim that people know that this person has been oppressed. I saw a video of a girl. I think she's in Ghana or something like that who went naked in the public. She went naked in the public. They show her pictures when she, all those Instagram posts that she made, and then when she went naked, that is not normal. You see someone going crazy? It's not all of them that is medical. Are you listening to me? No, because we have a generation who say they don't believe in God. They don't believe in Kinnikon. Meanwhile, you know your great-great-grandfathers they, believe, they operated the supernatural. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, the Bible says, But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. So you have three categories of human beings. The natural man. The man who does not, does not they call them free, free spirit or free, free beings. They have no reckoning of the supernatural. They think they just come here, they do whatever they like, they go. There are no consequences, there are no nothing. The Bible says that they cannot receive the things of the Spirit of God. The natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit, for they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them, because what? They are spiritually discerned, interpreted, analyzed spiritually. There is the carnal man, the one who is born again, but is still a baby. The person has not mastered the supernatural. And then there is a the mature Christian, the one who works in a dimension. Which one are you? And it has nothing to do with church. It has something to do with your knowledge, with your understanding of who you are. And who is telling you who you are? So a Christian is not designed to live by his own abilities. Are you listening to me? You, you're not designed to live by your abilities. You told me the story of a man who... When he was younger, his parents cooked him. They cooked him. You know what I mean by cooked? Okay, I don't want to assume that everybody understands what I mean by cooking. They didn't put him on fire. <laughs> okay, they, they reinforced him spiritually. Why? Because his siblings have always died. Okay, um, maybe they suffer some kind of condition where the kids are always dying. So, so that this one will not die, they cooked him. They, they prepared him 
they reinforced him to the extent that he became so old he could not easy, die easily now. Someone is asking, is it possible? Yes. See, I don't care what level you have read to. If you cannot, with all your knowledge, come and cast out devils. You, you are not my match. Not, I'm not your mate. <laughs> <laughs> now somebody will manifest now and then you can cut it down and do all your quotation and do all your knowledge and your certification. That's the reality. Until the person is able to. And I've always mentioned it to you, you, it's your dimension. The supernatural is actually your natural habitat. It's your natural habitat. That's where you are situated. We become so, so, so attentive, so conscious of this realm that we forget that we are actually beings from another realm. Once in a while, learn to exercise that dimension and because that's what this is about. I want you to be able to take on issues of your life yourself where you have not um, outsourced your spirituality to another power. That someone, that they, they said one person is in your village and is killing everybody. He cannot kill you. Why? You are born of God. Are you listening to me? No scotch of the tongue can speak contrary to you. No handwriting of ordinance written contrary to you. They say people, people die before they become 50 or 40 in your village. He cannot be your portion. Why? Because you have a different ancestry. You gave your life to Christ. Now you are born of the word of God. The born of the Spirit of God. Are you listening to me? So, if you're a church goer, it's okay. But sorry, there is, a, there is more. There is more. You can look for it, you can find it. Your spirit can handle it because you are actually a spirit being. I told you before. Um, there are things that has happened to me or things that I hear that, you know, they say, and, and for a long time, I was afraid. See, in this series, I will teach you how to overcome fear. I was afraid because many people are fearful. Meanwhile, the Bible says that the fearful will go to hell. Just in case a Christian, I don't pay attention to it. There are people who have subjected their lives to so much fear, they are paralyzed, they can't do anything. And I remember mentioning to you, see, when I talked about depression, I said, don't even allow the things, those wicked thoughts to get into you in the first place. Because once it enters, it enters another dimension. Are you listening to me? So a child of God should not be depressed. If a child of God is depressed, unfortunately, it means that he or she has not been taught until Satan took advantage. Or situation or circumstances took advantage. But under normal circumstances, a child of God should not be depressed. It is not in our genes. Jesus was never depressed. And just in case you don't know, he didn't live in a hair-conditioned room in those days. Even the rich man in those days, when the Bible says somebody is very rich in those days, look at what we're talking about now. They didn't drive Rolls Royce. The, the richest of them then was a donkey. And you cannot ride two donkeys together. It's one, except they build a wagon for you. <laughs> so our forefathers understand the supernatural. That's why they sought gods. They entered covenant with powers. They were seeking protection. Some of them were looking for powers. Some of them were looking for abilities. And some of us bear those names. They enter into covenant with those gods. And for a long time, many people became victims of those gods. But when you became a child of God, you became part of a different ancestry. So there are no causes in your life, only blessings. Because they call you the son, a child of God. A child of God. Hmm. Say with me, 
the supernatural life is real. If you don't understand it, you'll be like an Esau. If you don't understand it, you'll be like an Esau. Profane. Esau didn't understand. He, 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 he commonized spiritual things. He said, bat right. He said, what is bat right? When I'm hungry and I'm going to die. He didn't understand it. And many people are like that. They're commonizing spiritual things. We're taking it with levity. We, we don't think it's important. We don't think it's necessary. Don't do that. Don't be like Esau. The Bible said, for a morsel of food, he abandoned his destiny. Come on. Abandoned his destiny. The Bible said that later he sought it with tears. But it was too late. It was too late. So if you don't understand that dimension, it's not because there's something wrong. It's because you have not been taught. I realize that if we teach people about wealth creation, people go ahead to create wealth. If you teach them about repentance, people become born again. If you teach them deliverance, people are seeking deliverance. If you are taught the supernatural, people have a tendency to operate that dimension. And that's my encouragement. Something is not working for you. Look at what you have done. Look at everything that you do. That's good. Then go to the supernatural. Though we walk on the flesh, we do not walk according to the flesh. While yet not moved by the things which are seen, because the things which are seen are temporary. There are dimensions that you've never seen. So the kingdom of God works in a way with a principle, with laws and we need to learn to know them. After all, that's why you're part of the kingdom. If you're not supposed, if you're not, you are not knowledgeable about these things, then you, you don't understand what you carry. You should get to places and people should be afraid of you. So what that means is that when you don't get something, don't think it's because it means that maybe they're afraid of you. I'm telling you, my wife, we had an experience during the week. Um, we're trying to change the apartment. And so they asked me to fill a form, the agent, and then the picture, my picture attached to the form. And then when the landlord um, saw me, we, he had an interview with me and my wife. He said, when he saw my picture, he just liked me. Just picture. My wife tapped me. Is it because I'm fine? Is a way they don't like some people. That's the way it works. It's the way they don't like some people. Why? There are forces. Some people just like you. Some people are doing interview. People are feeling somebody just get there. Yo, instead of interviewing, they just just in with you, and then give you the things that people are refused. Why? Why do people pray before they go inter- to interviews? I hope you understanding this thing. So that's why we're teaching the supernatural. That's why we call it extraordinary life here. In White Olive, we call it extraordinary living. That is our destiny. And that's the level in which we're supposed to operate. So do you believe in the divine coincidences? How many believe in divine coincidences? Do you believe in the divine interception? You believe in divine orchestration? You believe in divine provision? You believe in miracles? That's the realm. If you believe in those things, then it means that you are, you are a candidate for that dimension. And you will live the extraordinary life. In the name of the Lord Jesus. So we don't see demons and angels with the naked eyes. You don't see that dimension with your naked eyes. You touch it through your spirit. In, your spirit. in 1 Peter, let me round up. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23. I want you to listen to what Apostle Peter said. You see, one of the things, one of the things I notice is, see, when something is beyond your five senses, we mystify it. Once you're, you're, you cannot interpret, you cannot understand um, that something, it's, 
it's far beyond what you can handle. What you, we mystify it. We, 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 we push it aside. We outsource it. So what did Peter say? Having been born, not of what? Corruptible seed. That seed there is spam. Okay? He used, used the word spam there. Having been born again. That's why Jesus mentioned the necessity to be born again. Because that, you are now born in that spiritual dimension. It's not physical. Okay? It's a spiritual. He said, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible. Through what? The word of God. So what it means is that we, when you became born again, you are actually born of the word of God. Are you listening to me? You are born of the word of God. Your ancestry changed. Your father now is who? Is God. That's why we call him the father of spirits. So you are born of the word of God. That's why I said during the midweek service, if you don't attend the midweek service, you're missing something. That's why I said, see, there are certain things that your mind, your brain, your first five senses cannot handle, but your spirit can handle them. Why? It's your nature. Apostle Peter says, he said we should add to our faith virtue, moral excellence. So if a Christian has not been taught that you actually have the capacity to operate in a higher level of moral excellence, we will never be able to. He, he mentioned godliness. He mentioned knowledge. He mentioned so many things. So you see Christians, born again Christians, who are not godly. They've not been taught. Meanwhile, it's in their nature, in their spiritual nature. Having been born of incorruptible seed, we are born of the incorruptible seed. You know what it means? Dogs will give back to dogs. Cat will give back to cat. Human being gives back to human being. If God wants to born, what will God born? Jesus made that statement and then the people wanted to throw him stones. <laughs> and they ah, why do you want to throw? Is it for the miracles and the signs and the things that I, for the good works? They said no. They said because you you, being human being, you make yourself equal with God. That's why we want to stone you. He now made reference to them. Go to your Bible. I mean, to the book in your law. Was it not written that you are gods? And all of you are sons and daughters of the Most High. James chapter 1 verse 18. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth. He brought us forth by the word of truth. This is New Testament. And if we are not taught these things, see, if we are born of the word, brought forth by the word, that we might be a kind, a new class of human being. Come on. Who is going to teach us these things? So your present condition, your present circumstances is not to overwhelm you. You already have capacity. And there's nothing you're going through that you, the Bible says God will not allow you to go through an experience that's beyond your size. You have the capacity. This is the word that supports it. You are born of the word of God. You are born again of incorruptible seeds. You are born of God's word. You have the abilities of God. You can command situational circumstances of life. If you try it once, it's not working. You try it twice, you've not working. You try it three times. Over time, after a while, you get used to that realm because that's where your realm is. I hear that eagles will take their kids far into the air and throw them down. It's uh, supposed to fly. But if, they, if an eagle stays too much with a chicken, he or she will not be able to fly. He will throw the baby from height, forcing he, um, the child, I mean, the, 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 the baby to do, to do what? To begin to demonstrate their power. Once they why, that's why we go through these experiences. Those experiences, we are learning the act of the supernatural. That was where Jesus, I mean, that was where David met God. And it shaped his life, changed the dimension completely. Something is happening to you. You are more than your situation. You are more than your circumstances. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Psalm 82 verse 1 to 5, that scripture that I mentioned, God stands in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among the gods. 
how long will you judge unjustly? So, so when you see that scripture, the Bible says that God stands where? <laughs> In the congregation of mighty, he judges among the gods. So those gods are not Chongo. Because these are the gods that we worship. It's not Songo, it's not Togu. My conclusion is, it stands among gods. The Bible says when the sons of God appear before God, remember, it said Satan also did what? Also showed up. In my research, I found out that it was supposed to be Adam that was supposed to show up. But because he had, you know, tripped him, he took his place. That was why he said to Jesus, um, he said it had been delivered to me, worship me, bow down, worship me, and I will give you. In the first place, it was not his own. So God stands in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among the gods. How long will he judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? Shela, defend the poor and the faladess. And because it looks like that word is talking to us, the gods. It's part of our responsibility to do what? To defend the poor and the fatherless. To do justice to the afflicted and the needy. Uh, this, this instruction cannot be to unseen gods. <laughs> it's instruction to us. Deliver the poor and the needy. Free them from the hand of the wicked. They do not know, nor do they understand. They walk about in darkness. That's why everywhere is messed up. They walk about in darkness. He said, all the foundations of the earth are unstable. I said, you are gods. And all of you are the children of the Most High. But you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. I shall not die. Say to yourself, I shall not die. You know why? Death is an enemy. Death is an enemy. That's the reason why many people are afraid of death. And I've said it before. The reason why terrorism will continue to, you know, expand and increase is because the people they are terrorizing are afraid. The, the, the terror, the terrorist is not afraid of death. The day we lose fear of death is the day we, we overcome terrorism. I'm telling you. Because they are ready to die. But the people they are present want to die. And so, how do you win a person who wants to die? And you want to fight a battle that you don't want to die? Hallelujah. Today, you are delivered in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody is free from the oppression of Satan. Why? Because you are a supernatural being. God has delivered to you the abilities and the capacities to operate in this dimension. When you do prayer and fasting, when you cast out the when you that is how to operate in that dimension. We should not beg you to eat, to drink, yeah, because it's part of your life. We shouldn't beg you to operate in that dimension. Why? That's your dimension. Can you close your eyes and we pray? You're not a victim. You're not a victim. Speak to yourself this morning. Lord, thank you for your power that's made available to me. I am born of your spirit. I'm filled with your power. I'm filled with your glory. I'm filled with your grace. I'm filled with the anointing of the spirit of the Lord. Lift your voice and talk to God this morning. He said, you are gods. Gods operate the higher dimension. Gods have capacity beyond the normal. God have capacity to change the course of life. They operate at the dimension where they regulate and control the destinies of men. Your destiny cannot be regulated and controlled by anyone. In fact, you have the ability to operate in that dimension. Talk to God this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for your grace. Thank you for your power. I am filled with your power today. I am not a victim in this world. I receive your power. I receive your anointing. I receive the power of the Holy Spirit afresh today. I am no more a victim. My story changes from today. Completely changes. Natole vasonderi kapradovoshti. Le prodovosontole kaparia. Thank you, Father. 
In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I want to give someone an opportunity. Is there anyone who can, all eyes closed, all heads bowed. Is there anyone who want to make a decision for Jesus? You want to start a relationship with Jesus. You want to be born again. You want to be born of the world. You want to be born of the spirit. Whether you are in this auditorium or you are connecting with, from, um, with us online, you want to make that decision. And please put one hand in your chest and lift the other hand as we pray. Hallelujah. Put one hand in your chest and lift your other hand. Hallelujah. If you're saying that prayer, please say with me, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I acknowledge that you are the Son of God, that you died for me. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior today. And I ask that you fill me with your Spirit. I will serve you all the days of my life. Thank you in Jesus' name. Let me pray for you. Father, for your sons and daughters who are making this decision, I ask that you fill them with your power today that you anoint them with your spirit today. That these ones are translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of your light. Thank you for your partners that work in their lives today. There are no more victims in this world. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. If you said that prayer, I'll just give you a card. Please fill it. If you're online, please send us a message or a testimony. We want to be able to connect with you. Praise the Lord. Shall we pray? Father, thank you today. Bible says that you gave part your apostles and then you sell, tell them to go into the household of Israel. And then you mandated them, heal the sick, set the captives free. You give them specific instructions. Today, I ask, that power is activated in the life of your sons and daughters. As you leave this place, mountains and hills, the symbols of obstacle, they will celebrate you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, nothing will be impossible with you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I receive the power of God activated on your behalf in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Is there anyone going through a particular experience that looks overwhelming? Today, I join my faith with your faith and I declare victory over them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As from today, you are no more a victim in this life. You are now participator of the divine nature. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Your victory is sure. The Lord makes a way for you. The Lord provides for you. The power of the Lord is activated on your behalf. There is testimony in your life this week. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, we declare every covenant of death. Anyone appointed for death this week. We declare that appointment is cancelled in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord will give you, deliver to you the treasures of darkness. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bible says that it's the one who gives us the power to make wealth. Therefore, I declare, receive that power in the name of the Lord Jesus. You will not be broke. You will not be stranded. You will not be frustrated. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord works on your behalf this week. Angels will minister to you. And the name of the Lord Jesus will be glorified in your lives. We thank you for your blessings over our children. We declare they are protected. They are preserved in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, faithful and amazing God. We give you all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. I said, in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Somebody excited, say it louder. Amen. Amen. Amen.